shoot. You're the front woman of Soldier Fire. That's right? right. Yes. Now, how long has Soldier Fire been around for? Um, I started auditions in 2002. Okay. And uh, so we, I think we had our first show in 2002, but we got busy in 2003, and ever okay. since then. Um, okay. So, what made you want to start a reggae band in Edmonton, of all places? Because I live in Edmonton, and I love reggae. Okay. <laughs> seriously, nah. no, that's seriously. <laughs> it could have been a soca band or a calypso band according to my Trinidadian heritage, but I rebelled and went with the truth and rights. Okay. So what is it about reggae music that draws you to it? Protest and love. Okay. Two things we must do all the time. We must acknowledge the unjust business in the world. And we must love those who perform the unjust actions. Okay, so love your love, love your killer is what you're saying. Yeah, man, you have to. You okay. have to because that person was somebody's baby once. That person was somebody's child, and they grew up and they found some reason to disconnect from the goodness. And but at the core of them, at every cellular level of every person that we feel that we must hate is a piece of us because we are all one people and we have to behave as if we are one people even if especially people don't want to say they want to like love their neighbor but unconditional love is only valid if you can actually love somebody without the condition of them behaving in the way that you wish they would. So that is love. Okay, okay. Now, this is the second album for Soldier Fire. Where have you grown from the first album, the self-titled album, to this album here, True Two Meals? What, what areas have you grown in? Um, what areas have we grown in? We went live this time. We wanted to be live, we wanted to be um, real. We wanted people to know what we sounded like live at our shows, according to the CD that they bought. And uh, although I love lots of things about the first album, this album I'm very proud of because, um, you know, I told Ibo, please just do it without asking me my opinion. Be real. And he did. So, I mean, it just it worked out so well for us because it's so much in a step in the right direction. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as you being a woman and being the front woman of a reggae band, how important do you feel it is for A, women to be visible as musicians and B, business-minded women at the same time? Well, um, I think that myself, I look for role models and they are very few. Um, we need to set an example for our daughters that they don't have to skin up themselves in order to get attention. We also have to make sure that they realize that their dreams are unlimited and um, the boundaries put on them by us as a culture need to be broken down because there is no reason why a woman can't be sexy and smart and successful and have self-respect at the same time. So, but without the role models, the children don't know. So we have to make sure that we big up ourselves in that same way. Yes, definitely. But you didn't touch on women musician though. Oh, yes. <laughs> women have a lot of talent. And it's very rare to see, um, you know, a woman on the bass and uh, a woman on the keys and a woman on the drums. And and on the mic at the same the time, same way. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is that use your talent, your skills, the God-given gifts, and forward. Yes, definitely. Now, as far as this album, what do you hope that it does for Soldier Fire? I want Soldier Fire to be a national household name, and that only expands into the international realm. But the truth is, I just want to play music, and if if all I do is play music and I can supply my child with the 
necessities of life by playing my guitar and singing. And I'm also putting out a positive message, then what more could I ask for from my life? Nothing. Okay. His last and final question. What is your favorite song on the album? True. My favorite album, my favorite song on the album is True. And um, that's because Ibo and I wrote that when we scratched. It was supposed to be Rastaman. I had this whole thing set up with the Rastaman thing. And, you know, I turned to him and I said, you know what, Ibo, like, this is a good song, but it's just not really personal. For me, that True is like my life story. Just trying to be like true to myself, even though people around me who love me don't really understand where I'm going and don't really see the big picture the way I see it. But I'm loving them still because I'm hoping that, you know, in the future they will look back and go, you know what, she always you know, she always had it in her mind. She always was gonna do it that way and you know, thank God she did. So How important is family? Family, um, family is important, but um, you also have to just sometimes shed that cloak of family because you don't always have the support that you need. You have to look within because your family loves you, but they don't always understand you. And you have to just move forward and love them same way, but, you know, love yourself more still. Excellent. And another last question here. Okay. The man Ibo, how important was he to this project? Ibo, Ibo's breath is in every beat of this album. We stayed up until four, five, six in the morning trying to figure stuff out. And every time I'd be like, you know what, Ibo, I think I can do it better. He'd be like, okay, go ahead. He's the most patient man, the most humble producer, but the most skilled, just visualizing the I mean, let me put that again. The most skilled um, visionary. That's the word I'm looking for. And um, Ibo's in the album. If you listen to the album, you know what kind of hard work went into it, what kind of soul and passion went into it. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sister J. Good luck with the show tonight. Thank you. We're going to have lots of fun. Of course, of course. Yeah, and we're so glad that you guys are here. Can oh. I interview you now? Thank you.